Okay, so get this. We're diving into a machine learning algorithm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And okay. it gets better. This one's being used to try to predict price movements in the market. All right. And it's inspired by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Wow. Using uh, general relativity to make money. I know, right? It's true. We're going to unpack this trading view open source script. It's called machine learning. Lorentzian classification. Catchy title. I know, right? <laughs> and it was created by this trading view user, Jada Horty. All right. But uh, before we go any further, I think we need to make something yeah. crystal clear. Okay. This deep dive is purely for educational purposes. Absolutely. We are not offering financial advice. No hot stock tips here. No, no. Yeah, we just want to. We're here to unravel the ideas behind it. Yeah, the, uh, the concepts behind this algorithm. Right. Um, and I've skimmed the material. Okay. And it really seems to hinge on a totally different way of measuring distance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. warping space time to understand the market. That's pretty next level. Uh, it is. So think of it like this. Traditional methods measure distance in a straight line. Okay. But financial markets, they're anything but straight. Right. They're all over the place. Exactly. Prices zig and zag. Unexpected events throw everything off. Yeah, it's chaos. It's a mess. Yeah, yeah. So a straight line really wouldn't capture the wild swings, would it? No. Especially those black swan events that no. come out of nowhere and shake everything up. Exactly. So traditional measures, they might tell you two points are close together okay. just based on simple price and time. Yeah. But but they could be worlds apart in terms of actual market context. Right, like the surrounding uh, events. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's where this Lorentzian space comes in. Okay. It's a uh, it's a way of measuring these distances, but it takes into account the warping of price time wow. caused by major events. Okay. Like uh, I don't know, maybe a surprise interest rate hike or a company's earnings report totally bombing. So instead of a rigid ruler, we're using something that bends and flexes yep. with the market's mood swings. That's a great way to visualize it. Okay. So now imagine you're looking at a chart, right? Okay. A big event happens, and suddenly, prices go haywire. Right. Traditional methods. They would struggle to make sense of that. Yeah. Right. But Lorentzian space, the algorithm can kind of see through the chaos. Oh, wow. It, it adjusts for those distortions. Yeah. And that helps to spot patterns that you wouldn't be able to see otherwise. Wait, so you're saying it can find opportunities that uh, traditional indicators miss? Yeah. That's huge. Yeah. Think about it this way. Okay. A company announces stellar earnings, right? Okay. Yeah. Prices jump. Of course. But what if, like, a few days later, there's news of an internal scandal? Oh. Suddenly, that price spike. It was a mirage. Okay. But traditional indicators might still see it as a buy signal just based on price alone. Just because the price went up. Right. But the Lorentzian algorithm? Yeah. Well, it would consider that time context. The fact that that positive event happened before the negative one. Oh, interesting. And it can potentially avoid a false signal. So it's not just about where the price is S, but about how it got T there. Yeah. That's really cool. Precisely. Okay. So let's take a look at some visuals that J.D. Horty included. Okay. I think they really drive this home. Perfect. A picture is worth a thousand words, especially when we're talking about warped space time. Right. So take a look at this comparison of neighborhoods in Euclidean and Lorentzian space. Right. You see on one side, you have a very neat sphere. Yeah. That's Euclidean space. Okay. All directions are treated equally, mm -hmm. but Lorentzian space. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a stretched out hyperboloid. Oh, wow. It's uh, it's warped by the time axis. Okay. And events closer in time, they actually have a greater influence oh. than those further in the past. So it's like the time axis is pulling everything towards it. Yeah. Almost as if uh, yeah. events leave a kind of gravitational pull behind them. That's a great way to think about it. Oh, okay. You're catching on quickly. So this warping allows the algorithm to really factor in how recent events yeah. impact current prices right it's like saying yesterday's news yeah is more relevant than something that happened a year ago makes sense especially when things change so quickly in finance yeah exactly yeah, okay. I'm, I'm getting the picture i think Fire. this lorentzian space is adding uh like a whole new dimension to the analysis yeah, yeah yeah but but how does the algorithm pinpoint the patterns okay so within this warped reality that's where the approximate nearest neighbors method comes in okay approximate nearest neighbors or an a n n Got it's it. like a detective <laughs> scouring through historical price data yeah and it's hunting for matches to the current situation okay but it's not just matching price levels uh -huh. it's matching the entire price journey within this warped space-time continuum 
So it's not just finding similar prices. It's finding yeah. events that led to those prices. Yeah, exactly. But it's incredible. And it uses this thing called yeah. nearest neighbors. Okay. Meaning you can set it to find, I don't know, say the five most similar historical patterns. So it's like saying, show me five times in history. Yeah. When the market behaved like it's behaving now. Exactly. So it's like having a crystal ball, but instead of the future. Yeah. It shows you echoes of the past that might hold clues about what's coming next. Chris Isley, now remember, yeah. this isn't giving you some guaranteed prediction. Right, of course. This is about providing you with a new lens, a new way to see the market. A lens that takes into account the very fabric of space and time. Yeah. Okay, my mind is officially blown, but I'm hooked. All right. Tell me more okay. about how this script actually works. Well, like most indicators, it gives you buy and sell signals. Okay. But these signals are based on that, you know, Lorentzian classification we were talking about. So each signal is uh, the algorithm's best guess. Yeah. About whether the price is going to go up or down okay. based on what happened in the past. Right. And here's the kicker. Okay. The script allows you to customize the analysis. Oh, cool. You can adjust how many neighbors it considers, what features it focuses on, even how it detects trends. So it's like you can fine tune your market radar. Yeah zero in on the signals that matter most to you. That's really cool. Right. But let's be honest. Okay. How accurate is this thing? So, you know, yeah. there are no guarantees in trading. Of course. This is a tool, yeah. not a crystal ball. Right, right. However, the script does have a backtesting feature okay. that allows you to see how it would have performed in the past. So you can kind of run these simulations. Yeah. See how different settings play out. Right. Get a feel for its strengths and weaknesses. Exactly. So it's kind of like a time machine. You can test drive different approaches. Yeah. See what works best. You got it. But, uh, of course, past performance is yeah. not a perfect predictor. Of course, yeah. Of future success. The market's always changing. Right. What worked yesterday might not work tomorrow. But it can give you some valuable insight into the algorithm's strengths and weaknesses. Right. I mean, we have to emphasize this again. Yeah. This is purely for educational purposes. Right. We're here to explore the possibilities. Yeah. Okay. Not give financial advice. Not telling you what to buy and sell. I know. All right. So yeah. let's dive into some of those settings and features. Okay. Because there's a lot to unpack. There is. I'm ready to go deeper down this rabbit hole. All right. Let's do it. Let's see what this Lorentzian classification algorithm has to offer. Sounds good. Welcome back to our uh, deep dive into Lorentzian classification. Yeah. Last time we really dug into the theoretical side. Yeah. And I have to say, it's really intriguing to actually see how it visualizes the market. I know. It's like uh, it's like suddenly seeing it in 3D or something. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But uh, let's get practical. Okay. How are traders actually using this to make decisions? Yeah, that's what I want to know. So it's uh, it's really important to remember that this is not some magic formula for instant riches. Okay. Yeah, that's good to uh, remember. It's it's a tool yeah. that can give you additional insights, help you spot those patterns you might otherwise miss. So it's like having an extra set of eyes yeah. scanning the market for those hidden opportunities. Yeah, that's a great analogy. Okay, so would a trader use this as their main signal or more as a, a way to confirm what other indicators are telling them? It really depends on the individual trader. Okay. Their style, their risk tolerance. Yeah, yeah. Some might be comfortable using it as the primary trigger. Yeah. But I wouldn't recommend that for everyone. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's a complex algorithm yeah. working in an even more complex market. Right. False signals are bound to happen. Exactly. So it's it's often wiser to use it as a confirmation tool. Okay. Say you see a buy signal. Uh -huh. You might then look for other evidence. Yeah. Like uh, a bullish candlestick pattern or maybe a breakout above a resistance level. So you're looking for a couple factors to line up. Yeah. Increase the odds of success. Right. It's like a checks and balances system for your trades. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, and that's where all the customization options come in. You know, you can fine tune uh -huh. the settings, the filters to match your strategy. Get you know, the risk tolerance. Exactly. Right you know, you time. can adjust the number of neighbors it considers, what features it focuses on. So many options. It's all about making the algorithm work for you. You talked about backtesting earlier. Can yeah. you just uh, remind me yeah. how traders actually use that to evaluate the script? So backtesting is uh, it's crucial. Okay. It lets you run simulations on historical data. Yeah. You can see how the script would have performed under different market conditions. Okay. Experiment with different settings uh -huh. and identify which configurations generated the most profitable trades. So it's like a time machine, letting you 
test drive different approaches and see what works. You got it. But of course, yeah. past performance isn't a foolproof predictor of future success. Of course. Yeah. But it gives you valuable insights into the algorithm's strengths and weaknesses. Okay. Right? The market is always evolving. Yeah. So what worked yesterday? Might not work tomorrow. Exactly. Okay. So let's, uh, let's flip the script for a second. Right. What are some of the pitfalls or limitations okay. that traders need to watch out for with this approach? Well, like I said before, yeah. it's not a crystal ball. Right. It relies on historical data okay. to make predictions, and uh, the market isn't always predictable. Yeah. It can be pretty random. Exactly. So there's a risk that it could give a false signal. Right. And even if the signal is accurate, yeah. the market can just decide to do something totally unexpected. Always keeps you guessing. That's why it's essential to use this with other forms of analysis. Yeah. Your own judgment. Not just rely on the signals. Okay, it's all about balance. Yeah. Not putting all your eggs in one basket, even if that basket is woven from space time. Exactly. Another potential pitfall is over-optimization. Okay, she wrote that. So uh, the script offers so many settings and filters. Yeah. It can be tempting to keep tweaking them. Okay. Chasing those perfect back test results. So you end up with a setup that works great in the past. Yeah. But then falls apart when you actually start trading. That's the danger. All right. So you have to find that sweet spot between optimizing for the past and uh, generalizing for the future. Right. You need a setup that's adaptable. Yeah. Yep. Not just a perfect fit for what's already happened. Speaking of past performance, I can't help but think about that disclaimer yeah. included in the script. And that disclaimer is there for a reason. Yeah. It states clearly that this script isn't financial advice. Okay. And shouldn't be taken as any guarantee. Yeah. It's for education and exploration. Right. Not a get-rich-quick scheme. So traders should never just blindly follow those signals. Yeah. Do their own research, understand the risks. Yeah, exactly. Maybe even talk to a financial advisor. Absolutely. It's about responsible trading. Yeah. We're here to, you know, explore machine learning and finance. Yeah. But it's important to do so with a clear understanding of the downsides. I think we've covered a lot of ground here. Yeah. We've seen how traders can use it, explore backtesting, even uh, talked about the pitfalls. We're getting a deeper understanding of this script's potential yeah. and how it can potentially help traders. But um, there's one more piece of the puzzle, I think. Ooh. We've explored the how of the algorithm, yeah, but I want to dig into the why. Ah, you're talking about the bigger implications. Yeah. The insights this algorithm offers beyond just the buy and sell signals. Exactly. What can this approach teach us about the nature of the market itself? That's a, uh, that's a fascinating question. Yeah. And it leads us to some really thought-provoking territory. Okay. Lead the way. All right. So join us for the final part of our deep dive. Okay. As we explore what this Lorenzian classification reveals about the hidden rhythms of the market. Ooh, the hidden rhythms. And what it might mean for the future of trading. Welcome back <laughs> to the final part of our deep dive into uh, Lorenzian classification. Right. We've explored how it works, talked yeah. about how traders are using it, uh -huh. even uncovered some of those uh, pitfalls. Right. But now I'm curious. What does it all mean? Okay. What can this approach teach us about the market? Yeah. That other methods might miss. That's the that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Yeah. I think the answer lies in how it challenges our very understanding of how the market works. Okay, I'm intrigued. Yeah. Break it down. So think about traditional technical analysis for a second. Right. It relies on the assumption that patterns repeat. Right. History rhymes. Yeah. But uh, what if those patterns aren't as reliable as we think? Okay. What if the market isn't just a cyclical machine? So you're saying there's more to it than just looking for the same shapes on a chart. Exactly. So Lorentzian classification suggests that the market's memory, you know, it, it isn't linear. It's yeah. not just about finding those same price levels or formations. Mm -hmm. It's it's about how the timing, the events surrounding those patterns yeah. can totally change their meaning. It's like uh, saying the same word yeah. can have different meanings right. depending on the sentence. It's in the yeah. tone of voice, the context. Perfect analogy. Yeah. Cool. So like take um, a head and shoulders pattern. Okay. A classic bearish signal. Right. And traditional analysis would say, sell, it's going down. Yeah. But what if that pattern formed after a major positive catalyst, right. like maybe a, a breakthrough product launch? Yeah. Well, the context suggests that that downward move might be temporary. Oh, interesting. Not yeah. the start of a, of a big downtrend. So Lorenzian classification is helping us see beyond just the surface level 
to understand those nuances that uh, traditional analysis might miss. Precisely. Okay. And I think that's the big takeaway here. Right. This algorithm isn't just a new tool. Uh -huh. It's a new way of thinking about right. the market. Right. It's telling us that uh, the past isn't just a blueprint for the future. Yeah. It's a collection of stories. Okay. Each with its own unique... Uh, Twists and turns. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, I can see why this is so fascinating. Yeah. It's, it's acknowledging... That the market is this complex system, right? Not, uh, not some simple equation to solve. Exactly, and I think that's a really crucial insight for traders. Yeah, it it pushes us to be more adaptable or <laughs> yeah. critical. Yeah, in our analysis, not just blindly follow signals, right? But to understand the story behind those signals. It's like being a detective, not yeah. just a chart reader. I like that. Yeah. Looking for clues, weighing evidence, considering different interpretations. Before making a move. This has been a mind-expanding deep dive, I have to say. Yeah. I feel like I've learned about a new algorithm. Yeah. But also gained a new perspective. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, for sure. And remember, this is just the beginning. Okay. As machine learning keeps evolving. Uh-huh. We can expect even more innovative approaches to market analysis. Approaches that challenge how we think and push us to think differently. Yeah, it's an exciting time to be a trader. It really is. Yeah. And we'll be here to break it all down. Of course. To help you navigate this crazy world. Absolutely. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, exploring finance and cutting edge technology. Yeah. Make sure to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to The Deep Dive. We'll keep bringing you those insights that matter. Helping you stay ahead of the curve. And, uh... As always, yeah. we encourage you to do your own research. Absolutely. Explore this open source script we've been talking about. Yeah, and keep those minds open yeah. to new possibilities. Until next time, happy trading. See you later.